Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF, Friday, made it through another week. Uh, I don't know actually what we're going to be doing too much today, but uh, we got a few things to talk about. First of all, um, the birdhouse challenge is, uh, Monday is the big reveal. So uh, if you have any photos that you need to send me, I need you to send them to me by Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, the latest. After that, I'll be making the video to uh, show on Monday. So far, we have about 50-something entries. It's going really good. Everybody did a, a lot of great work. We'll talk about that more. Um, also, today, I wanted to uh, start off. We have those uh, soft razor blades we're going to be talking about. We also have the, uh, the sheath. We uh, finished painting the sheath. Now we're going to make a frog for it. So we've got a few things going on. Let's get started. Okay, first off, let's start off with the uh, the sheath or keeper that I made for Abe's beautiful knife. And you could see here, this is what we went with. It was green, was the winning color. And of course, I put a little red down here. The red, you always put on something. If you're in the field, it stands out and you don't have to worry about losing it. So I uh, I really like the way that came out. I did it in my, uh, that's a 40-year-old paint. And I do it in a special wash way that just shows the grain and also... Uh, gives a nice look to it doesn't it? I just I love that color and I love that kind of look so now let's go make the uh, the frog for this knife and uh, so that we're going to put that around here the leather frog to hold it on the belt so let's go up in the attic and do that now okay we're in the attic and uh, if you've never been up here before with the channel uh, this is where we have all the cool stuff uh, <laughs> Billy over here remember we got all the cool stuff up here. I mean, I can't tell you how great it is up here. I got such stuff up here you wouldn't believe. And uh, let me show you something. How about this for a birdhouse, huh? How cool is that? See this thing? <laughs> I found this. I found it in the garbage. Uh, I mean, that's just incredible, isn't it? Somebody made this, threw it out. I don't know what. Maybe they did it for some kind of project. I said, I, how could you throw that out? I would think, how great would this be to paint this entire thing white, right? Nice white. And in these little recesses in here, you know, put like uh, pictures of, of marble statues, you know, like uh, David and uh, all them other ones. But look at that. It goes all the way around. How cool is that? All it needs is some, some paint and, and I think it'd be a nice little birdhouse, but it's kind of you know, a little big. Then I got this up here. You ever see this thing? See that plane? Somebody threw that out <laughs> in Malba. Malba's a town that's next to me. It's a real kind of richy town. Look at that. They threw that out. I mean, that's like a vintage back in the early days of radio control. Uh, yeah, it looks like radio control. It's got an antenna, but look at it. It's even got the motor in there. They threw that out. <sighs> you know where that was going. Right in my car. Yeah. I got some cool stuff up here and yeah, one sixth tank. Oh yeah. One sixth. <laughs> That's GI Joe scale. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. This was uh see that? That was a, a deer that my great grandfather shot in Maine. I think it's a, uh, what is that? A 12 pointer. Anyway, nice big deer. Nice big buck. It was, that was years ago. And uh, let's see what else. I mean, this is, I can't tell you the cool stuff. Some of my clocks up here. Hey, look, look at that vehicle. That's a cool vehicle, right? <laughs> yeah, I got some stuff. I could, I could spend hours up here showing you some cool stuff. Look at this. See this up here? This girl I worked with at work, uh, her boyfriend worked in Black Bear Lubricants. And I said, can you get me one of those empty can? That's empty. It was never filled with lubricant. How cool is that? Huh? Look at the graphics on that can. That's going to go right in my barn. Yeah, my big light bulb. And uh, anyway, up here is where I have my secondary workbench where I do uh, leather work and stuff. You know, all my leather work is up here. And you can see that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working on the knife today on here. But um, we're going to be making this uh, no sewing even though years ago i bought this beautiful look at that that's a titman uh leather sewing machine that was one of the few times i worked overtime to buy that i think thing was expensive 
But uh, yeah, I used to make, uh, you know, the leather work and things like that using that. So we're going to be doing this no sewing, just make a, uh, a quick leather sheath using some, uh, we got some all kind of leather stuff and scrap leather. And we're going to make a frog for that. This, see that? That's three boxes of leather. Okay, now let me tell you. I know this is going to sound crazy. See those box? That's that there represents uh, a cow and a half of leather. And what it is is uh, because I'm a vegetarian, I didn't want to see any uh, cows killed to do leather work. So that actual that leather I bought is from uh, cows that died naturally. Can you believe it? I paid extra for that. Those are lightning strikes. You know, like a lot of cows are killed by lightning every year, and I paid extra to get cows that weren't slaughtered just for their skin. Can you imagine that? Anyway, let's get started. Okay, I hope you'll pardon the mess up here. Uh, the last time I was up here, I had to put a uh, battery in my iPhone, and I bought these uh, battery kits. It comes with all the tools, and the funny thing is, uh, I made a mistake, and I had no idea. I thought my phone was a 6S. And uh, I, I could have sworn when I bought it, he said it was a 6S. I ordered the kit. It, it turns out I had a 6, so the battery didn't fit. I had to rebuy the kit. But the kit comes with everything you need, all the tools and everything. And, uh, and it comes with the battery. If your battery is starting to go on your iPhone or any of your other devices, this is the way to go. Don't go, you know, it only cost you $20 for the battery with all the tools. And it was definitely worth it. It went in one, two, three, and I got it on Amazon. Really good deal. Okay. So when you're looking for leather, you got to select what kind of leather you want. You know, if you're making some kind of sheath like this one here, you know, it was a quick and, and easy sheath, you know, that you made here. You could see the thickness of the leather um, depending on the sheath that you want to make it for. So this one, you could see here, this is too thick. This leather here, and it goes by ounces. They That's how they measure the leather. But you can see how thick that is, and it's not very bendable, pliable. But this is great for carving or, or tooling. If you wanted to do leather tooling, like, uh, like you know, these... Uh, projects here that you know some of practice projects and things like that that you make when you're learning how to do tooling leather tooling you could see that uh this this is an oak leaf here this was a competition in a, a leather uh club and uh you can see all these things these this is how you practice now this is what you would use for tooling this isn't going to be good for us we want something like this piece of leather here you see this here this is nice and pliable and uh, it's, it's, you know, I guess it's about half the thickness of this. So we'll use this and, uh, and cut it out. Okay, now what we're going to do, we cut our strips of leather. This is going to be the belt hook here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this keeper or the part of the frog that's going to hold the scabbard. We're going to wrap this around here. So we're going to put this down, this piece of leather on first. Then we're going to wrap this real tight. It's got to be tight because this has to catch on these two lips here. See those two lips? That's where you want and it. has to be tight because leather really don't stretch. Uh, it takes years and years for leather to really stretch in. And this ain't going to have enough. It's not like a shoe. So we're going to squeeze this real close. We're going to make two marks. And, uh, and then we're going to make the marks, transfer it onto here, and, and we'll punch it out. Now, because that. the fit of this is so critical, you don't have a lot of room to play around with. You have to get it right the first time. So we made our marks with the marker here where we're going to punch the holes. Now, you take your little punch here. You see the little punch? And we're going to make a hole here by using the rawhide mallet and banging down. Now, uh, before you make your holes, it's a good idea to take a piece of scrap leather of the same type Make some holes and then see how your rivet fits in there. You see, I used a bigger punch here. It was too loose. You see, it's that's a little too loose. You want this to fit in here snug, and I'll show you what it should look like, like that. You see how snug it is? There's no play, and that's exactly what you want. So this is the one we're going to use and punch out those holes. Another good tip, if ever you're thinking of getting into leather work or even for the shop, this is a piece of polyethylene. It's like a backing board. What happens is when you uh, hammer or, or make a hole into any kind of uh, leather, this will ab absorb the punch, and I'll show you what I mean. 
You see now that punch dug into here, but it's like self-healing. You can see there's no hole here, but it, it saves your tools. Now, if you were to do the same thing on wood, eventually these tools would dull out much quicker. So this saves all your tools from dulling out. It's a great thing to have, especially for any kind of uh, punch work. Now what we did was we passed the, uh, you see, we passed the rivets through here. Now we're making sure everything fits up right, everything, because you only get one shot at this. And, uh, and then we'll use a small piece of metal underneath here that you have to get something that'll fit in here like this. And then we'll pound down the top washes over here like we did in the rivet setting video. And, uh, and then we'll make a keeper. And we're calling the project done. Uh, I wanted to make something nice for Abe's knife. You know, for those just tuning in, this is Abe Elias may, uh, uh, donated this knife to the channel. I put some handles on it and I made a little scabbard for it. Now, uh, what's nice about the scabbard here is that it's, it's wood. It doesn't transfer moisture so much, but let's check it out how it goes. And you can see here how the, uh, the rivets are seated nice and tight in here and, and it's just the copper rivets are so nice, aren't they? I, uh, I gave this a, uh, a coating of some beeswax and, uh, now we're going to slip this scabbard into the frog and you can see how this works and you see nice. And, and now look, it's got to be tight like that. What a nice fit, huh? And boom, it stops right on these two tabs here and that's it. And then I put a little keeper here and because I'm right-handed, I put the keeper over there like that. You see that? Now when I go to grid, this is hanging from my right side. So when I go with my right hand, I just flip this over and withdraw the knife. So isn't that a nice system? Isn't that, uh, and then when I wanted to put the keeper back on, just uh, snap this over and uh, it can't come out, you know, even... I, uh, I really like it. I think it came out really good. I love the green. I think the green was a beautiful choice with the red. And uh, I think this is a nice addition to a beautiful knife. All right, let's see uh, what else we got going. Now, in case you were wondering what the knife, Abe's knife weighs in, finished with the, sca with the scales on here, weighs in at just over 6.72 ounces. So just under seven ounces for the knife. And the scabbard with the frog weighs in at just over two and a half ounces. So it's a very lightweight system. You wouldn't even know it. I mean, the way this is All made. All right, next up, a good friend of the show by the name of Brian Little from Marion, uh, Iowa, sent in a, uh, you remember this from uh, my unboxing a while ago, but he sent in a bunch of uh, great plastic scrapers. He saw me scraping something off with my nail and he says, you got to try these out. He he must use these for a living or something because he knew everything about them. He knew about these. He knew about the types of holders that they come. They come in all different holders. And he sent me a couple holders. He said, this is the one he likes. The Ace makes it because it's not as big as the big ones and it's not real small like the little ones they smell. It's kind, it's kind of in between. He says this one really works out well for him. And what these are is they're basically plastic razor blades. They're made from like a Delrin composite. And uh, you can see here, uh, the Mini Scraper is the uh, is the company that's in Maine, in the United States, and they make a lot of uh, different tools and things. They also source these, I guess, from China under their own specifications. And uh, you can see here, there's three different type of blades now. I know the colors might change because they're different with different companies and may, they might have even changed here. But uh, when these here were the soft were blue, you can see here it says soft. These are the blue ones. Uh, the orange ones were the medium and the yellow ones here were a hard, but they're also a dual edge. And I'll show you what that means. Now, if you look really closely at the edge, you can see um, this one is a little bit thinner than that side because it has one is a heavier duty than the other. Uh, these two, the uh, soft and the medium, from what I could see, they looked pretty close. They, I couldn't see much of a difference, but let me show you how these work. And this is the little scraper you can get with that usually come with these. But to open it, you just uh, pull this side over like this. It opens up. You could put a new blade in and you could flip it because uh, the, good, the nice thing about this is that they're double edge. Unlike the single edge that uh, they're replacing. Now, if you ever tried to use this on any kind of metal, for example, like this uh, clamp here. If I was to try and use this, no, and no matter how gentle I get, it's going to scratch the metal underneath. However, watch what happens when I use this yellow skirt, this plastic razor blade. I can get under that label, uh, under the 
uh, sticker and I could peel it up and you can see here I'm just getting under it and I could peel it up and it doesn't leave uh, you see how it's coming up and if I really if it's a really tough sticker that you have to get up you just uh, hit it with a, a little drop of lighter fluid let that sit for a minute and then okay, do it here again. we go it's only been about 20 seconds but I'm gonna show you here just that little bit of lighter fluid really makes a difference on how this can come off and you can see here it's scraping the whole label off you can see that it's coming right off and uh, and these work terrific and you can use them for anything you can use them for paint scrapers But you can see here how you don't have to ever worry About scraping you see that perfectly clean. You don't have to worry about any of the uh, uh, Scratching up if I tried this with a razor blade no matter how careful I was there would be scratches on there now um, You can see here it works really well and let's try it on some paint and what I did just to give this a test See how nice that works? And to give this a test, what I did was I uh, painted some swatches here onto uh, this area. And we're going to give this a test and see how Now, this is a latex type paint. And the reason that I, I, I'm painting the birdhouse, so I had some, and I just thought this would be a good test for it. Now, I put a orange blade, the orange mini scraper blade, into a regular scraper that I have here. And I'm just going to see how this, oh my, look at that. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I never seen anything like that. Can you believe that? Look how nice that that's regular paint. You can see here, you know, this is a uh, you can see it's all dried paint. It's it, it but I mean it just comes up so easy and I can't believe how nice this works. And uh Brian, you were right. Once you get used to these, you know, and no wonder a lot of people have been buying these and a few people have told me about them, but uh this works out. It's just talk about satisfying when you see something work like that so anyway uh these are unbelievable works really good let me try uh a different okay color. i tried the uh, mini scraper soft blade in here and that's the soft one that'll uh i guess contour more to sm sm softer areas but uh you can see here it works but the orange one definitely uh picked it up easier so uh, the orange one would be better for this type of material. The softer one might be better for a different one. Let me try the yellow. Okay, here's the yellow. Remember, it's a double edge. It's got a fine edge and a hard edge. I'm using the hard edge now to try that. And, okay, it definitely, uh, it's stronger. You can feel it's a harder edge, but it doesn't lift it up as easy as the orange. I like it. It seems like the orange blade this one here or maybe it's just a holder but the orange blade really really lifts it up much much easier so i like the orange blade i guess that's the one i would go and that's pretty much the medium one that everybody uses but brian thanks so much these are a game changer i really enjoy so in closing special thanks to abe and brian for today's content and also thanks very much for tuning in hope you have a nice weekend take care now bye-bye